praise to the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, above all, the greatest gift that you have given to mankind is yourself. We don't often realize it. You gave us yourself. Because you gave us your word. And your word is you. And it's by your word that the whole creation came to be. Therefore, you have given us everything. Thank you. A man does not realize what you have given to us. You even went to the extent of stepping into time and putting on flesh. I will call you the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, man still did not know how to say thank you. Well, we thank you for gathering us together in this message under the banner of this message of the hour. To teach us to make us to know who you are and to appreciate who you are and what you are doing for us. For which reason we fear you. I will give you thanks for all of this. Therefore, today, Lord, as we gather unto you, Father, speak to us. We want to hear you. Forgive every sin of our lives. We talk word and good. Whether we remember them or not, whether we are in our own just perish every sin in your soul of forgetfulness. Today we are here in front of you. Lord, forgive us. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse every brother, every sister here at you. That I should be hold us here. Fellowship with you this morning. Lord, do you not see any sin inside any one of us? In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, see us dressed in the white linen garment of your saints, the divine of Christ. Let that be our portion in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. And because we are gathered on to you by your spirit, this your spirit too is our teacher. Let your spirit teach us this day. That we will depart from here, knowing you know better than we did when we came here. And knowing you so, give us the divine enablement to go out there and teach others as well. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. For in Jesus Christ's holy name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise Thank you all for coming. I see some faces I've not seen before. God bless you for coming. And further invited you. God bless them as well in Jesus. If you look around you in the world today, you don't need anybody to tell you that the end is the end. There's no generation that will come again on this end. This is the last generation. This world is going to end on this generation. Whether you like it or not, it does not matter. Continue to go to school. Continue to get married. Continue to have children. Continue to build your houses, your mansions. But no one can. The end is there. So when you are going through life now, 
everything that you are doing, just know, always look at the back of your mind. Jesus will come today and say, it is time. And if you believe that, the question that you ask yourself next is, if he comes, will I be among the ones who will take away the that glorious factor that is coming? Are you sure today that if Jesus Christ comes for his church, his church, not the churches that you and I see everywhere, Christ has only one church. Are you sure that if it comes to you, you are definitely going to be among those who will go? You know, the next coming of Jesus Christ he is not coming to this earth. He's coming to the earth, he's coming to the air, and we, the church, we will go and meet him in the air, and then he will take us home into heaven. That's what we call rapture. It is not the second coming. Second coming will come a few years after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second coming will come a few years after that. But the most important coming of Jesus Christ is the rapture coming. So, my question to every brother, every sister here today is this rapture that is coming now, which can come anytime. I was listening to a preacher this morning, and he said, 2023, there are so many things will happen in 2023. And that mankind should press itself up to face 2023. So I ask you, my brother, I ask you, my sister, who are here, if the rapture will come in 2023, I'm not saying it will come. Please understand me. I'm not saying it will come. So nobody will come and say, ah, that man said I told you come. Then he come. I never told you anything. I never told you anything. All I told you it is very now. Yeah. So if Rafa is going to come next year, you here today listening to me in the flesh and our brethren on the platform. Can you beat your chest right now and say to yourself, I know that if it comes, I am ready. I'm going to be among those who will go. Knowing as you do that God sees your heart, He sees my heart. Can you right here today as you are sitting down here, beat your chest and say, Yes, me, I know if it comes, even now, now, Papa, I'm going to be among them. Can you say that? If you cannot say that, my brother, my sister, will have a day. You've got to get yourself ready. No, I went around for 120 years telling people to get ready. God is going to flood this earth and kill everybody. They told him you're talking nonsense. I'm not calling myself no, I'm not, not at all. But I'm saying the same degree of disobedience that was in the days of Noah, it is that extra degree of disobedience is what is on this earth now. And they are arguing that the God of today is not the God of the days of Noah. Uh, God of today, how can we kill 
millions of people. Uh, no as they are not many people on earth, they will kill them. Ah, but our own. Uh, 2022, the population of the world is 8 million. How can God kill them? I want to remind you that the God that you are in this church this morning to serve, this God, he does not change. He has never changed. He does not change. He will not change. What he has said is what he's still holding on to. It is what he will do. Whether the population is 10 billion or 1 trillion, it means nothing to him. Do you know my problem? Do you know your problem? Mankind. We think we are important. That's the problem with me. That's the problem with you. That we are doing God a favor by being here. You lie. Read your Bible. Revelation 4 says very clearly God created us for his own pleasure. I'm asking you, brother and sister, anything that you are keeping your heart that's your, for, for your pleasure, can you not decide to not throw it away one day? Can you not? It doesn't tell us, I don't need you again. When we begin to remember that that is who we are to God, then this idea that no, he can't kill us, that he, kills them, he will kill everybody. Look, this world as it is today, not today, not today, 27th November 2022. I'll tell you what then. God could decide that he want 8 billion people on this earth and one of them dead. What the next five minutes? And it will happen. And in the sixth minute, he will create another 10 billion. So if you know that that's who you are, that you are nothing, that I'm nothing, what is our grand grand? When we are telling you come to church, you say, Well, you know. Um, okay, okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Never, never mind. I know what I'm doing. Thanks, man. We tell you to pray. He said, ah. yeah, God sees my heart. God sees my heart. Is that me? Is, does that mean pray? Are you praying because God sees your heart? Well, the church starts at 10 a.m. I said, no, no problem. Uh, when does that Baba come to, to the focus? I say, let me let me go home. Do you know what you are saying to God? That I fear man more than I fear you. Because that man who they call chairman or managing director or general manager or manager who says to you, report for work at 8 o'clock, you know too well that you, you dare not get there at five minutes past eight. And then God says, you have a good job for 10 o'clock. He said, never mind. I can get there for 11. He said, all this other, let him just sit in my face. That one doesn't matter. Which God are you talking to like that? Do you really know who this God is? We don't fear God. And you don't fear God, you say, I'm going to the rapture. Ooh, you may deceive yourself. Which rapture are you go? The rapture of your chairman or my director, the rapture is before you. God only knows to enter. He knows to see my life. Church. The greatest gift of God to man, I want to repeat, is his word. You have to talk. The greatest gift of God to mankind is his word. There's nothing higher that he can give you. Why? Because God is his word. Today, 
John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was what? God. Finish. You know what? God said, I give you myself. And you and I have been to, well, should I accept or should I not accept? Can you believe it? The empty said, Oh boy, I like you, 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 you a good job. Um, hmm. Last Friday before Christmas, I have a present for you. Will you rush to get there that Friday or not? Yeah. Huh? If, if, if they allow you, you can even come in on Thursday. Thursday night, just to make sure say, And God is offering the biggest gift to me. Offering to give them the biggest gift to you. He says, and I'm debating whether I should accept or not. Mankind, wake up. Wake up! This offer will not be there all the time. Remember when we were talking about the squeeze and the quick, short walk. How many of you remember? I said in the time of the quick, short walk, we will be preaching to the eternal lost. They are here. And we are preaching to them, knowing that they are lost forever. Do you want to remember among that? Who wants to remember the among them we are going to preach to and let you know that they are already lost? Why? Because the sacrifice, the blood sacrifice of the order in heaven is already off. It's no longer available. Christ has risen from that seat. And that mercy seat is now judgment seat. So if they like they can spend their life in church, they are already lost. How many want to belong to the people who, who are lost? How many? Raise your hand. Nobody, huh? Right? If nobody is holding his hand, then get ready to do what God says you should do. End of story. And what is God saying you should do? He says, receive the present I am offering you. And that present is myself. How many will receive that present here today? Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, you have seen the hand of your children to our offer. I ask oh God right now to look into their hearts now. And if there be gentleness in the heart, that they have got us here to hear your word, to receive it and make themselves part of your word. Father, we you come to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for all of this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's get on with us, our work. We are still talking about adoption. And the reason we are spending time, some of you say, that is, let's talk about something else now. We've talked about, I believe the sixth week, we are talking, sixth Sunday, we are talking about the adoption. Ah, it's okay now. It is not okay. Make sure you know it. Where you don't understand what I'm saying, please raise your hand. I will answer you. The thing about this little fellowship is that we don't want you to come here and go home without getting what you came here for. So if there's anything in your mind while you are here, and I've not said it, or I did not touch it, and you know something you're always thinking about, just raise your hand. I will stop and ask you what's the matter. Give me whether it has what I, whether it has anything to do with what I'm preaching or not is not an issue. I will answer you so that when you are going home, 
you are going home with a heart that is satisfied that what is troubling you has been addressed by the word of God. This is what church is all about. It's not about coming to sing and dance. We start the house of God now to the nice club. We will not allow that in this place in Jesus' name. Yeah. So, my dear children of God, adoption is very important. If you want to be among those who will be preaching to the eternal lost, then you will have to be adopted by God through this Christ. Otherwise, you cannot be. That is why you need to know about adoption. So don't close your hearts to it and say this can't be said. No, don't do that. So let's take off now. Look at David. God looked down from heaven. How did he describe? Our father gave me the Bible. He said, You are a man after my own heart. David was never ashamed that he was a servant of the Lord. He loved the Lord and he would proclaim the Lord anywhere, anytime, not caring how anybody feels. He was always in happy mood before God. He said, when they said, let's go to the house of the Lord, what did they see? He said, he was glad. How many of us woke up this morning and said, hey, mm, mm, if I don't go down, then go say, I don't come. Can you be described as David? Eh? When you don't want more finish as you are dressing up, anyway, if there's something to come, they'll say, not the music, they'll say, they will say, when they say, let's go, that's the one, he will jump in your blood. You are busy murmuring that you are coming for your maker. Yeah. God have mercy on mankind in Jesus' name. Ah. Our problem is that uh, we are looking for Saul. We are waiting for people who come from seminaries and Bible colleges to come and teach us God's word. And you know, of course, they are not going to lead us to the promised land before I talk about it. Because the word of God is not a seminary. The word of God is not by the college. The word of God is in this world. Go and get it. You take it up in this world. You ask you for revelation. You give you revelation. Your life is made better. And you move on. So you don't care what anybody is saying. You are happy. You have found your own Canaan land. And that is what we should always remember. But the problem is, far too many of us are in church today and we have not got to our own Canaan land yet. You may be angry with that, but that is the simple truth. You know, you can't mess with God. Adoption is still on this issue of positional places in the church. Placing the church where it belongs, 
and each one of us into what we are called by the adoption of God. We are adopted into the sons to the sons of God. And we are in sons. How? By birth. We are the sons of God by birth. Was that when our mothers gave birth to us? Yes or no? We are adopted sons by birth. You hear me, John? We are adopted sons and daughters of God by birth. But not by birth by our mothers. But by birth by the Holy Spirit of God. There's no way you are going to talk about the adoption if you have not been born by the Holy Spirit. So when you look at the Hebrews and the Israelites, right? Now, every one of them was a Hebrew. True or false? What birth was that one? Natural birth. Do you see the difference? The Israelites, they were coming, coming out of uh, Egypt. We all know the story, right? Yes, sir. Where were they going to? Yes, all of them buried there. They were Hebrews, yes, Israelites, right? Yes, sir. How were they Israelites? Yes, By yes. birth, through mama and papa. Is that not true, church? Yes, sir. You and I gathered here today. Do we have our own Canaan that we are going to? Yes, sir. Do we have our own promised land that we are going to? Yes, sir. Which is your promised land? Which is my promised land? Which is your Canaan? Which is my Canaan? What is the name of it? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. You can't see, George. Yes, sir. They were going to Canaan, a land situated somewhere, and they were going because we're going their natural birth as Hebrew people. Not so. Me and you were also here gathered this morning because we are going to our own Canaan land too. That Canaan land, is this somewhere where you are going to step your feet upon? No, no. It is by the Spirit. Right? Yes, Therefore, our birth to be able to go into that our Canaan land has to be by the birth of the Holy Spirit. You kite this church. Yes, and until you have that birth, please don't start thinking about adoption. You have to have that birth first. Before you need to think about adoption. I hope this is getting clear and judged. If you have the Holy Spirit of God, if the Holy Spirit of God has given birth to you, are you with me, George? Yes, sir. If the Holy Spirit of God has given birth to you, is your name. In the Lamb's book of life or not? Do you believe that church? Yes, sir. And if your name is in the Lamb's book of life, was it that day when you came here and I was preaching to you, something caught you, you see, very good. Is that that day man, that God now wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life? No. When, the, when was your name written in the Lamb's book of life? God bless you. 
Before the foundation of the world, that's when your name was written there. Otherwise, you cannot come here and see Holy Ghost baptism. Yes, you can't disturb. Yes, Therefore, they deceive you when you go to the church and you say, Okay, sinners, come forward for what you call that prayer. Yes, sinners' prayer. Altar call. Huh? Altar call. Altar call. Huh? So everybody begins to rush there. And one man in suit behind the pulpit. Now I say to you, repeat after me, Lord Jesus Christ, this day I come to you to be my Lord and Master. To come into my heart. I will read this and after all, he said, the, the, the man now said, yes, clap for them. You are now born again. Don't you are born in nothing. You don't go couple. The man has just deceived you. They are just deceived you. And the next thing we say, we are speak. Speak, speak, speak. That's it. So just speak. Say something. Say something. So if you get for you on the I don't understand. Just begin to speak in your language. Don't say, yes, yes, you have it. You have it. You have it. You have it. You have what? Do you think God is cheap? Look what it cost God to give you and me salvation. This God who is Elohim, He stepped into time, took on my flesh, took on your flesh, and we slapped Him anyhow, spat on Him, tore the clothes off Him, finally crucified Him naked on top of a hill. One of the easiest ways to disgrace any man or woman is to strip you and take a two of us. Yes, sir. And the God that created me and you, we spice his body, trust his flesh, accuse him of sin when he never sinned. All because he wants to attack you, he wants to attack you. And then you now want that salvation, you want it to be like say the ice cream that you are looking. You know go walk. There is sacrifice to pay. That is why before you can see Holy God baptism, you would have overcome something. We have the church. Yes, so you who are saying, I've been born by the Holy Spirit, I don't argue with you. But I have one question to ask you. What have you overcome for your Christ? Can you name it? If you can't, then just say to yourself, I never I never reach here yet. Let me try some more. So you see, when you now have the Holy Spirit, as all of you said it, from for the foundation of the world, that is election. You understand? Yes, sir. That is election. And it is by the foreknowledge of God. Therefore, you are receiving Holy Ghost baptism. You always remember, you look back that God knew you while He was still Elohim before there was anything called creation at all. And that's where you receive your election. We don't know when creation took place. But if you go by some scientific thoughts of what we call the Big Bang, then creation took place anything between 12 and 15 billion years ago. So Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, beginning God to get heaven and the earth. That's something that happened between 12 and 15 billion years ago. 
But let us make man in our own image and likeness. Creation of Adam. That happened about 6,000 years ago. I hope you see the difference. Can I trust? So now you know you have one goes that way. You are born again. I tell you, you were born again as you answered me correctly before there was anything called the world. So that's when the election happened. God already saw you that anytime you are going to come to this earth, you will love him, you will keep his commandments. And that's why you are made. Immediately, automatically, when we go the Lamb's book of life, you are elected. You understand that, George? Yeah. Then, being elected, you will now have another thing ahead of your election. That is what is called predestination. They sound alike, they look alike, but there's some difference. Election looks back to the former of God. Predestination looks forward to your destiny. You know what? Now that I'm born again, and that is no complicated. Now that I'm born again, what next? What next? I'm born again, is that where it ends? You are born again, you are the elect of God, now you have to move forward to be the predestinated seed of God. Are you with me, church? Yes, sir. To know exactly where I'm going. In other words, what is my role in the church? Remember, there's only one church. That is why I never allowed this place to be called church. That's why I chose the word fellowship. You know, you see them outside today. The names of church is too many now. Kingdom of God shall come. Kingdom of God shall come, church. Kingdom of God has come already, church. So the the congregation was saying an instant church. Just come and you receive church. Not so so true. But just like I said, upon this rock of revelation, I will give my church. And the gates of right shall not be gained against it. So I gathered here this morning. To ask myself that question. Now I have received the Holy Ghost back in. So what? Where am I going to from now on? I'm in the church. Yes. What is my role in the church? What gifts have I got in the church? These are all the things that you need to have to make you the adopted son and daughter of God. You cut that out. Okay, all right. The day of time that when the Israelites left. Who was leading them? Huh? Okay. Did Moses lead them into the promised land? No. But he got them to the point where you will now take your decision. That is what Captain Spaniard meant. I have brought you here now. 
The next step is where? From Kadesbenia. Where is the next step? Where, where? What is that? So Moses said, I brought you that now. Well, choose. You go enter or you don't go enter. Did they agree to enter? Most of them did not agree. But you must get them to that point or not. And when they now entered, when you finally entered, who let them in? Remember that one. Huh? When he led the children, Joshua, when he led the children of Israel in, church, did they just come and enter? When they entered, did Joshua do something or not? What did he do? Huh? Yes, now they finish fighting the battle. So they are not sure that the land is their own. Two of us. So what did, what did Joshua do then? Yes, sir. Was the land there or not? Yes. The land was there. It's their own. They conquered it. Nobody's arguing about that with them. Why did Joshua say, that's your land? Everybody, you are now free. You have to go. Go ahead and enjoy. Is that what he did? He divided the land. So I now know which one, my own people, I now know which one is our own. Do you notice? You also notice that the land divided into the people. You know that Caleb? Did he not come from the tribe? But he did not ask for his own possession? Yeah. Do you come out and try to tell the church? Yeah. They entered the promised land. There was no more enemy. They knew where they were going. They were all there. But Joshua just said, no, feel free. You can go where you like. Send me where you like. No, he divided the land according to the tribes. Then within the tribe, they now allocated it, they allocated it to an individual family. Do you see, church? It is so with you. Then we have our own promised land. So, how did you go about it? You know the meaning of Joshua. You know Joshua is the meaning of Jesus. That's all. Jesus has, he brought us to the place. After he got the people, then well, what happened? What did Jesus do next? Did he stay with them? No. Huh? No. He didn't leave them without anything. No. What did he do? He sent the comforter. What's another name for the comforter? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. And until the Holy Spirit came, there was nothing the disciples and others had to do with what Christ has bestowed upon them. Two of us just they waited for the Holy Spirit to come. And then we saw what happened. The church was established, so you now know where you are. Then the Holy Spirit started. Giving gifts. So inside the church, inside knowing what your role 
this is the job. Very valuable. The work needs to have that you are going to use for the job, and that's why it has been spreading. That's why you are here. That is why it's not everybody that comes behind you to put this. But I mean, of course, you are behind you. Does that mean that you are superior to any other person? No, it doesn't mean that. But this is part of what you have by being in the body of Christ. I hope you are trying to catch this uh, thing that I'm trying to tell the church because it's very important that we understand what we are saying and what we are doing. But you know, you know Jacob, right? Jacob, did he live before the Exodus, or he lived during the Exodus, or he lived after the Exodus? Which? Before. When you get home, go and read again. The Exodus goes on about Jacob. You will not see that before he died, he called his children together, didn't he? And he started blessing them. Tell them certain things. If you go and check, they all rise with what they got under Joshua. You'll be amazed. This God that you and I are serving, how detailed it can be. And how it is it is. Therefore, we must take everything that I'm going seriously. We are, the Bible says very clearly, a group of called out illiterate people. Do you believe that church? Do you believe that we here were a group of called out the believers of God by the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you believe that? Yes, Good. So, and we are here because we want God to teach us His word. So, because we are this group of believers, we want Him to reveal to us. How we shall be positionally placed in the body of Christ, which is his church. That is where we belong in the church, where we can work together along with others as members of the body of Christ. When you look at yourself, eh? Should be your body as when you pass. The parts of your body, the parts of my body, are they doing the same work? Huh? Are they in different bodies or in one body? Hmm? And yet they are doing different work. Mm -mm. What they are doing to bring up things together to make the body. Like this is what church is all about. When we talk about the definition of God's adoption, we already have the spirit of God. And now, having seen, having got the spirit of God, it means we are already inside of one body. The Bible says in First Corinthians 12, by one spirit are we baptized into the body. Is that not true, John? It's by one spirit you and I are baptized into the body. So somebody is so.
Somebody told me, told me. Somebody is killing. Kill of his of the sheep. Another one is sold of the sheep. Somebody is uncle of the sheep. Somebody is calf of the leg. Somebody is knee. Somebody is knee calf. Somebody's mother. Somebody's uh, intestine. You know? Another person is born. What is mercy? Another is born. If anything is absent, it cannot be the body, true or false. All of this is must be there to make it be what? Not the true term. As you sit here today and believe that you have the Holy Spirit of God, that means you are the body, true or false. Right, church? Let me ask you. What are you in that body? Can you tell me? Do you know it now? Are you me? Are you food? Are you uncle? You don't know. But you know you are in the body. By our adoption, you will know which one you be. Do you catch this church now? You will know, and therefore you will not know the role you are going to be playing in the job. Okay. I said, are you, are, uh, have you been baptized by the Holy Ghost? If your answer is yes, then you are in the body of Christ already. Is that not true? So, now you are in the body of Christ. I'm asking you. By the way, what is the what is the the, the body has a head or you don't get head? Who is what is the head of the body? Or who is the head of the body? Jesus Christ. Christ. So you have received the only gold baptism in my body, yes, sir. Therefore, you are in the body of Christ. Yes. And Christ is your head. Then I ask you, as you are in the body of Christ today, 27 November, 27 November, what part of the body are you? You should know, raise your hand. Does anybody here know what part of the body he or she is? But are you a part of the body? Yes. When you are part of the body, you are certainly something in the body. Right? Yes, sir. And yet, yeah, you don't know it. And doctor is saying, you don't know. Are you free church? You must know. Why must you know? It's because you must know so that you will not walk, you will do in the body. Amen. Is this is just not true. This is what we're talking about. Not true. 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 Not when you answer the question of what you are supposed to do, then you know what part of the body you are. Then you know what you are doing inside the body. You can't be too clear. Huh? Is that clear? It's clear, sir. Okay. 
So we need to have a good understanding of some of these things. They will help us. And then we have to go and talk to other people concerning them. So I made the statement. And I believe that statement. He said, there's nothing to live for. Only to get others saved. And that's the best that I do. The nothing is better than to help to get someone else saved. My dear children of God, if you are going to get somebody saved, you believe that it's your duty to get somebody saved. Because you believe that you are already saved. You are beginning to get close to having an idea who you are in the body and what you are supposed to be doing in the body. Do you catch that word? Absolutely. There's no other way. You have to see it. All of this is to tell me and you what we should be doing. And therefore, we have to be very careful who is going to be for us. God forbid. But it does happen, eh? That you are not feeling well. And this sickness requires surgery. Yeah, or what you call operation. Then you go to the hospital for this operation. And one doctor, young, handsome, is sued. So call someone and say to you, Oh, are you uh, Mr. Jones? Say yes. Then we I'm Dr. Lewis. I just graduated from uh, the university. Uh, and uh, I left for I like to do this operation for me. I, I graduated in November. I graduated in September. I want to do this operation. Oh, don't worry, I'm from. I've got the knife, totally sharp. The people caught me. All the, it's the same thing. I'm going to you, tell them, you go. Say, okay. Or you could say, uh, my kid. It's all right, you want to make a response. If you're not going to do your attitude, of course, you say, this boy went out for what? September. You don't remember. You don't tell the same thing happened like already. You go shoot, you go shoot. See, Papa, see, Papa, no problem. I don't know what to do. Well, uh, you say break down yeah? and the coach. I'm not satisfied. They say I should see that administration. Let me go and uh, finish with uh, that part. Uh, uh, put the date in here so that uh, what are you looking for? You want to run the lane. What do you want? You want an experienced person who has been doing this operation. You don't want to be the guinea pig. What is that? You first try say, This is my first operation. After two months, we'll just come up for university. You want to win. Is that also a church? Yes, sir. You see? The best experienced person in the matter of the word of God that you are now doing. The best experienced person is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the best experienced person. Why? The Holy Spirit is God's uh, what is, is God's physician. 
and his God's altar. The Holy Spirit is God's physician and is God's teacher. Therefore, he is the experienced one, all of us that we need. So do we always care? Let us pay talk now for that prophet called Samuel. The people of Israel are praying. Now they you need from Samuel, the messenger of God. Uh, we are not sure that you move around places because you only know about Israel. I said yes, and the prophet to Israel. Then that's the problem. You are prophet to Israel, and you are happy because you see, you have not tried other places. And no one will be all right. Why do I need to try? I'm sent to you, and so that's the problem. You are sent to God. You see, we want a king. Who said that to you? You let God hear it. They said, no, no, let him hear. You want a king. Someone said, God is your king. And they said, we know that one now. And that is the king. Why do you want another king? If you want to be like the rest of the world, you don't matter. When someone said, no, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. God is your king. Go and think about it. God went to go, uh, someone went to go to. Can you imagine? God said to someone, my dad will concern you. They said they don't want you. You want to keep them, huh? Let them have their kids. Huh? Tell them, you know, I must try, I must try something. He wants to know and start telling them what is the thing to them. How is the bringing the word of God to them? And all that God has used them to do in their midst. He asked them that question, can you condemn your sin? They said, no, 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 no. That's so far. Okay. He said, hey, you know, I haven't done it any wrong. Why do you want to go against what I've done to you? The people said, what was what was what was you don't seem to understand this matter. Everything you have said, you know, because, uh, someone said, I don't come to you and beg you for money. Am I? It's not me. Don't take anything from us. You were very good. And I brought to you things from the mouth of God. You said, yes. Everything you said is fine. Then why are you doing for my family? You brought them to you. We want to be like the rest of the world. Give us a king. That's all. We are not sucking you. Still remain there as prophet. Still be talking to God and bringing from God to us. No, we welcome his friend. We are concerning king. We must have one. So what is your king? Say, this that matter. Let God remain as king over there. But see here, eh? no. You want somebody you can salute and call your imperial majesty. As the rest of the world is king. They broke someone's house. And the Jews saw the son of Kish. Was it disaster to them or not? God was somewhere was so not a disaster to them. You see? So this is what we are saying now. I want you to know one thing that the book of Ephesians is the Joshua of the New Testament. The book of Ephesians is the book of Joshua of the New Testament. Does everybody catch me? Eh? 
you understand the book of Ephesians is the book of Joshua of the New Testament. Are you sure to understand? Okay. But after 400 years, they will be brought out. Do you understand that church? Is there a view? God said to Abraham, Your seed will sojourn in a strange land, and the people will mistreat them. Will really suffer. Um, so that they will go to a land, eh? they will travel to a land, and they will be there. Right. So they will go to a land, and they will stay there for 400 years. You are aware of that, thought? Yes, yes, sir. How many years did you actually stay? 430 years. God promised them to stay there for how long? But the effort of staying there for how many years? Do you catch this in God? What was the 30 years? That's extra time. I have news for this church. We are today living on extra time. If you go by what is in this book called the Bible, yes, we will not know the day of rapture. We will not know the hour of rapture. But we will know the season of rapture. If you go by what is written in this book, that period has already come. If we are calculating in figures, I can prove it to you if you have blackboard. Well, we have this thing of saying, let the church contribute and revive. I can give you some scriptures, yes, to show you that by this number of years, that's what should happen. God deliberately makes sure it will not happen that way, even though He has given you revelation of His word to know it, but He makes sure it's not happening so that His word, that nobody will know because our heart will be full. You and I are now living in extra time. But God has not told us how long the extra time will be. That's why we must be careful and must be careful. What is the extra time with Romans 20 to the church? How many of us want extra time? So the over and 23, which is after a come 23. Those of you want to come 23, raise your hand. Yeah. And on the platform, too. Those of you say, they have to come 23, raise your hand. Why do you feel this? Why do you feel this? 
because we are not sure. But we are supposed to be sure. When God told Abraham, your seed is subject for 400 years. And God not know that the 400 is the first Is it not known? But well, is it not Abraham? No. You understand? So he has not been dividing for you and me the word, the type of word he gave Abraham, he has given it to you and me in the Bible. That's why I'm saying, I can prove it to you in the Bible. If I have the word here, I'll prove it to you. Because we know how long the Christian race will be. The seven church ages, we know how long they will be. And when you do all of that, you will see that we are living Yes, God has not told us about this exercise. It's to make you and me to make ourselves ready. If all the churches in the world are saying this to people, a lot of the people going on in this world today will be going on. Do you believe that church? Because everybody is saying, I don't go. That will be doing right because I don't know when I will go. But instead of preaching it, you are preaching money, you are preaching prosperity. Oh, you are going to marry this year, you are going to give back next year, you are going to be rich. Yesterday, my wife was saying, uh, one day in my room, I just walked in to find one man is dealing with one, you know, yeah, 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 pastor for that, you know, how they can do to give themselves. And I was like, come here now. Now, one, what, one dollar will come one billion. Now, I just stood, I just stood at her door and asked her, I said, how far? I said, how far? How can this man say this? But you know this lying now. You know this lying. And it's much like the whole world with his lies. Why? Has he not heard about? Uh, that couple in the early days of the uh, church, what is that their name? Huh? Sanana and Sanana. Sanana and Sanana. Sanana and Sanana. Do you remember here? Do you remember here? He has lost everything called fear. He has lost it, fear of God. You cannot have fear of God in you if you're a pastor and you make that kind of statement because you know you are lying, you know you are deceiving the people. The Lord was telling me a few days ago here. I understand. The Lord just said, okay, all those who bring 50,000 now. If you ask me to bring in, God is going to do so and so and so. I, I asked myself, did he say that in the church? He said that they are telling me he was in the church. He said, yeah. And then what did he say? He said that more people that the man asked for came out to give the money. Are we supposed to be talking about money in the church? Eh? And why is it that what that's what we are talking about the church is today? Why? Instead of letting them know that Christ is on the way to come and take his church away, which is make all of us to sit up. No, we won't do that. God will deliver us from all these lies that are going on in churches now in Jesus' name. Amen. This just can't continue to be like that. So you know, God promised Adam and Abraham that they will just perform their lives, but by a strong hand, he will deliver them from the land. This is the Bible in Genesis. And so who did he use? He used Moses. And Moses came. And, uh, and Moses was a real type of Christ. Do you believe that? 
Moses was a type of Christ. My sister, there, okay, read for us Acts chapter 3, verse 22. Do you have the distance there? Acts 3, 22. Yes. Acts chapter 3, verse 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me. Him shall you hear in all things, whatsoever he shall say unto you. Amen. You see, God always said in this book, we shall have to and the to raise up a prophet who will be like Moses and that they should listen to maybe Christ. Now, I wonder if you know that Christ was a prophet. Christ was a prophet when he was on this earth. He was a prophet. Christ is in heaven today, right? Yes, sir. Is Christ a prophet today or not? Because hmm? I said Christ was a prophet too or not when he was here. Yeah, yes. Did you not know that? Yes, sir. Okay, now he's gone to heaven. Is he still a prophet or not? No, no. How many say? Christ today is not a prophet. Let me see your hand. Those who say that today Christ is not, is not a prophet, look at your hand. Okay. Those who say that in heaven today is still a prophet. Where? Those who say, I am not sure. Where? Praise God. Today in heaven, Christ is not a prophet. He is a priest. Okay. The priest and positionally a king. On earth was a prophet. He never now is a priest. When he returns to earth, he will be. Therefore, Christ is prophet, priest, and king. But at certain times, we need to be balanced properly concerning the word of God. So you understand that. Yes, sir. That's what we do here. That people must know what they are doing. So God, from the children of Israel. Without any doubt, he promised them rest. Did you know? So, the God promised the children of Israel rest for God. Do you and I, do we have a promise too? Do we also have a promise? We also have a promise. And God promised to us to give us spiritual rest. Do you understand? To the Israelites, it was physical rest. To us in the church, it is spiritual rest. You can't be church. Okay. So, In this our own land, which is the Holy Spirit, when spiritual rest and the Jews when physical rest. So you notice, as I said before, there was this God in front of Israel too, and then Joshua took over. And Jesus did the same with us. 
the first one from somewhere. Just just a minute. Okay, so as I was saying, most is program to very good the Joshua people the mother design up for them and all that. Now we are in our own time. We have our own Joshua today. Do we have our Joshua today or not, John? Huh? Papa, we are disappointed now. When I come, when I come, see, when I come, see you now. Huh? People are answering me like this. I said we have our own Joshua today too. Who is our Joshua now? Holy yes, sir. The Holy Spirit is our Joshua. You see, there is the one to bless us as Joshua placed those children when they go to the promised land. Christ has brought us to where now and the Holy Spirit to take over. So we're in the land now. So the Holy Spirit is the one. Bring the blessing because our doctrine is about blessing the soul. All right. So here we read why because the Holy Spirit is the voice of God. Do you realize that? Right now? The Holy Spirit is the voice of God. You know, and that's why. Is the one that speaks through our inner man. Joshua placed the Israelites in the natural land. Now the Holy Spirit is placing the church positionally in the land which is the spiritual land. And any man, any man outside of Canaan. In the days of Joshua, any man outside of Canaan, the day of Joshua, does he have any business to the promised land? No. Do you agree, George? Yes, sir. Good. If you say you agree, therefore, any man outside of Canaan today, what is Canaan today? Therefore, any person outside of Canaan today, which is what is going on? It is not the promise land. You catch it, Josh? Yes, sir. Therefore, if you haven't got Holy Ghost baptism, you are not yet inside. You haven't entered your promised land. So you have to work out now in this God, cry to God. Study the word of God. Be like Christ. Because being a Christian simply means be like Christ. And so when you be like Christ, when I be like Christ, then the Spirit of Christ, which is what you and I call the Holy Spirit, will also be in us. Do you see, John? It's as simple as that. 
and then everything we need to work out for us. The promise that was given to the church is not a natural land, it's a spiritual land. Always remember that. And the Bible says what? What does the Bible call you and me? Hmm? Can you remember? Hey, Peter, what the Bible call him? Huh? Yes, not me to sit down. You are a royal. You see, which the which other one again? Yes. Hey, man. Do you catch it, Doug? Yes, sir. So, do you see yourself as belonging to royal priesthood? Do you see yourself that way, brother, sister? What is that one? Do you see yourself as belonging to the holy nation? What is the third one? Do you see yourself as being peculiar? Ah, you are not like the rest of them. You could have said, I don't feel like them. You know that he cannot be like Father God unless it is Father God. See, yeah? You cannot be not for the Holy Ghost and still be like the world. It is not possible. That's what makes you peculiar. The addressing cannot be your type of dressing. What African, 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 huh? African magic. You know, you see those girls, when they do for house, what do you know they wear? They tell about, huh? Look at her pretend, look at her side. Who are they watching? Then they tell about, what do you know they wear? That's what we need to do. We need to go to go to athletics. Bump shots. Bump shots. Bump shots. That's correct. Yes. Bump so in the air. Bump shots. On Sunday, all those people who see for African, uh, where is it that day this morning? Church. Then pastors, you see how many pastors say, Sister, come forward. Yesterday, I see you for African money. You are wearing bomb shorts. Sister, lay down because we'll cast that devil out of you that made you to wear bomb shorts. I don't ask you that. Pastor needs their ties because the ties go plenty. Instead, now praise, you go to praise them. Yes? Yes, go ahead. If a married couple, a married couple, yes. Hold on, hold on, please, 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 that which was brought to our friends, let me see the best answer to this question. A couple, right? They're in their house. Yes. So if the female put on a bomb shot, is it wrong that the Christian inside the house? Listen, the people come into the house or not to see them? Uh, uh, my question is really okay, clear. Let, let me say the best one. Okay. If the sister is wearing the bomb shot in the bedroom, as long as your definition of bedroom means husband and wife only, I cannot say it is bad because nobody is seeing it. Now, and the husband has the right to see her nakedness. Huh? Outside of that, it's wrong. But cool your people, we cannot wear bomb shorts. We cannot wear the dress. Oh, it's not gone. No, it's there. But cool your people, we cannot wear dress. That when you sit down, you begin to look for your back. Your back to put on your knees to cover you. 
Huh? I know what the position here. Somebody comments and thought you allowed it. Oh, okay. So, so you see, eh? inside church, you see the way they sit down, they carry the handbag, food to cover. Why? You don't know, you don't know, say you say church before. Why do you want to use that? Eh? Or if they do another one, well, as they do a color, they're going to sit and dance. <laughs> and they're walking like that. Why give yourself that problem? Why are you walking on the street and you are taking time to pull your dress with your hands down? Why are you not sweat the one with your down on it? Why? And then you say you are peculiar people. How can you be peculiar? Then you wear the one with your top. You make yourself bend down like this, look at your whole breast. Are you a peculiar person? I suppose to be showing your breast in public. No. But what they do there now? The middle of their body is not covered. And they write to church. And then the martial man will not come in. He don't cut the, he don't do woman's, uh, uh, he don't place the head, man. He don't put care in man. And this is how church. And the church here, right here, now, now for shoulder, then the, the rest of the arm, you don't turn up to black holes. Black one, they don't write for that, they call them tattoo. You see a peculiar person. In the evening, you are going to find him in, in Mama Rose Bar. You see a peculiar person. He will be doing for one night. Cyber. He will be in Baba Jebu's uh, shop. He's playing uh, Baba Jebu. Yes, Are you a peculiar person? No. <laughs> Not to talk about lying. What's the carrying this in off now? So so lie. This is now instrument of lies. No shake your head though because you deny the time. <laughs> but Bible says you must be peculiar people. And you cannot be if you are in this way that you are going now. We have to think. We have to be different persons. Let me tell you who we have to be. A man that is in Christ, we are calling now. A man that is in Christ, who has the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you who should be a man or a woman in Christ, who has the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you how you should be. You must be able to appear with another person when the person is wrong. Tell me, church. When the person is wrong, you must be able to be out with him or with her. Don't crucify him, don't crucify her. Why? You when they crucify, do you do wrong? Yes, sir. Eh? Yes, sir. So should God crucify you? No. Oh, he said no, but you can crucify that person and you. Therefore, you are not a peculiar person. You want another example? Yes. You want? Yes, sir. Okay. You want the long suffering. As you do, sir, you hear that 
Then you reach as you are buying it, and somebody comes. You don't look them deliberately, they just step on your feet. Hey, are you crazy? Do you not see me? Are you blind? You step on me, you are stupid, you are foolish. Who the hell are you? Do you know who I am? No, that's the time we don't call from church. Where is your long suffering? Where is your long suffering? And when they say rapture, say amen. <laughs> you know they go. You never have ready to go. I just tell you. You must be gentle, therefore. You must be patient. You must be humble. You know, for example, take this place down. The church is 10 o'clock. We come to, um, uh, no, what do you call that over here? Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Huh? No, I won't get there. We will be pleased and praise and worship. Nonsense. I can only come when the man is about to preach. Do you know what is wrong with you? Pride. Arrogance. You are superior to the people who decide to do the sin. Therefore, you cannot number yourself among them. Let me wait for the time when the man who is preaching will come. God is speaking at you. Remember that the first sin in the universe was pride. To be visible. For the first thing on earth, the type of killing was adultery, sex. So you have to be humble, you have to be faithful, you must never be negative. Be positive in your thinking, be positive in your work. If all that passes through your heart, let it be all positive. That makes you therefore a different person. And therefore you are peculiar. Judge, you agree? Yes, so that is where we are going to call it today for now. The Lord will bring us together again next Sunday. And we will continue from that stuff. Let us pray. We thank you, our Father and our God, for all that you blessed us with today in your word. In your holy name, we pray for us and for us today. Amen. All that your spirit has spoken to us about today. May it dwell within the hearts of your children, all of us. That the change we need in our lives will be given to be accomplished in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we know too well we cannot on our own, by our own power do it. We can't. What you are asking us to do is to be resolved, is to make that promise to you that you want to be different. You want to be a peculiar people. We are saying that every weight All that is afflicting us, all the sinful passions, all the pictures of Satan coming to our lives, Father, come and remove it from us in the mighty name of Jesus. Any possession of Satan in our lives, Father, uproot it, tear it down. Amen. And consume it your Holy Ghost fire Amen. for extinction in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, help us to believe 
that the time for rapture is near the corner. And so help us to begin to live the life of Christ so that we become the peculiar people, the royal priesthood. People who stand for Christ every day and in any situation and take whatever pain comes with it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we realize that we are on this earth, and while we are here, we need things to enable us to put body and soul together. Lord God, you are the provider. Only you. That's why you are the builder. You are the builder. You are the builder. You are the builder. You are the almighty, all sufficient God. What they do, you bless us, you succor us. You are Jehovah and you, the most righteous possessor of heaven and earth. You will bless this world with thy blessing, meant for us your children. Therefore, as we enter a new month in this week, as man can't stand. Father, bless the work of our hands. Amen. Help us to prosper in all our endeavors. Amen. Not allow that failure, disappointment, and frustration, stagnation, even retardation. Don't let it be a person of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, be our help. For you own the universe and all that there is in it. And you have promised to bless us your children so. Let this blessing be us in this week and the new month you are entering this week in Jesus' name. Amen. I will promise you, God, when we bless us, we will not use it to go back to the world. We will use it to glorify you, to honor you, to lift you up, to bless your church. Look after your minister, our brethren, the poor, the needy, and use it for ourselves also, and remember your life in prayer. Let it be so, O oh God, in Jesus' name we pray. There's so much ailment, so much sickness, so much disease, so much infirmities everywhere now. Lord God Almighty. Whatever be the pain, whatever be the sickness, whatever be the disease, whatever be the infirmity that is troubling your children, Father, uproot them from our lives to the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We shall not go blind. Amen. Glaucoma, cataracts, all these eye defects. Take them away from us, who God in Jesus' name. Amen. Where there is dumbness, we cannot speak. Father, lose our tongues. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All over the place today, what we hear is diabetes. Blood sugar. Father, blood sugar. They say high blood sugar. Father, the world high. As the opposite, it is good. You are saying, Oh God, let our blood sugar be the normal thing it should be in Jesus' name. Amen. We don't need all this medication. Your name is Jehovah Rapha. 2,000 years ago, you took care of all these ailments. But by the sight of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we were healed. 2,000 years ago, this was settled. Give your children, Lord, to the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Remember your children who are suffering from ulcer. Those who are affected by cancer of any sort in our family. Remember them all. All these are demons. Remove their presence from the bodies of your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Fight the battle of life for us. 
the source and purpose of the life. Where they are not bad. Um, or um, where they are assassins, kidnappers, um, doctors, rapists. All of them who go around destroying lives, live, property, and all. But so I do not allow them to come anywhere near where we are to the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Everywhere there is a garden, lots of people directed against us. You know them, Lord. You know where they are. You are the only same God. You know everything. You are the only present, only present God. You fill up all space. Father, but you also the omnipotent God. You brought all this. Father, all these people who are making their passion, they have nothing there to do other than to be against us. They gather before their idols. They are cursing us. All these things. You know who they are. You know where they are. Father, because you are the omnipotent God, descend upon them wherever they are. Unleash your anger upon them that they never have the to allow to take all their wickedness in Jesus' name. Amen. That's our only interest, only interest, only interest. You promise of God that they will deliver us out of all our problems. Yes. That they will be out of their hands, let you stumble and fall and let us be the stone. We are praying, bring it to pass now, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do not allow the joy of our salvation to go away from us, Lord. Amen. Let it be always there. Amen. Then that at the end of it all, we shall have your Holy Spirit living inside of us. And we shall know that when that day of rapture comes, we shall make the rapture. Amen. Father, let it be our first. Amen. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Arise, O Lord God, and come down and show us thy mercy. For the time to save us, I will plead, Lord, with all who have committed to your this day. Let it be the time to save us with all of them. For here the set time is come. God, grant that this be the time you have set for us, and that all your promises to us will come to pass in the times you have set for us, and no power of hell shall delay them. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Receive the priestly blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. The Lord is very sign up for you and the precious unto you. The Lord lift up your spice countenance upon you. The Lord bless his children in present day. Amen. The grace. The love of God and his Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty King, Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I thank you, brethren. We are treasures of the great platform. We are known. Some of you are grown. We are going to be a brother and gentleman, a dear, a brother, a sister, a friend of family, a children, a brother, a people, a sister, a taxi, a sister, a shaker. And the brothers who have left, I know they were there before. Because you have given God your time, the sacrifice you made, God will. We request you to bless you for more to give us. Next Sunday, next Sunday we are going to dedicate the song of our sister Julia. Amen. So join us to rejoice with them next Sunday. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all night I long. To be like Him, all true like yours, from day to day, I only ask to be like, just to be like Him, to be like Him. Jesus, on a dialogue, on a dialogue, to be like.
If you know that there is something wrong, seriously with you, maybe with your child or with your husband or with your wife, that place where that problem is. Believe that we can pray here now and God will answer. If you don't believe, then please don't join. Don't just be quiet. But if you believe, quietly place your hand where that matter is and say to God, when the prayer comes forth, I will receive my healing. If you believe it, lower your head, close your eyes, and talk to God in your heart. Place in your hand where that problem is. Make sure you have faith. Church, we don't do this. And we don't we know yourself, we don't do this, right? Every time. This is and that song was coming up to be like Jesus. This is the message that came to this prayer concerning this amen. There are two things. The amen is the first one. Believe it and hold your hand there. Watch God. Answer you. Answer to me. Talk to him in your heart. And believe God. Don't doubt. Look away from the pain. Look at what you are feeling. Don't allow any of that to come in. Just know that it is God by His Spirit, which we know that Spirit is here now. Yes. And that Spirit is the healer. He will heal you down. God is your father. Hold God to a small and see what he's going to do. We shall find out the testimony of God. Cry to him. In your heart, cry to him. He will hear you. It doesn't have to be you. It can be your child. It can be your husband. It can be your wife. It can be your parents. Or somebody who is dear to you. On the uh, platform, too. This city is moving forward. The Spirit of God is here now. It's here. It is moving forward. It's touching everybody who is sincerely calling on God concerning this thing that is troubling in your troubling heart. God sees your heart. If you are serious, He's doing it now.
come again in the name of Christ Jesus. Lord, I come before you as your son and your servant. Or what you don't hide me. But in Christ Jesus, you have made me worthy. I present your children before you, Lord. For some minister, they'll be talking to you directly. Concerning the afflictions in their lives. Concerning the pain they are feeling. For themselves, their families, their loved ones. Papa God, you know what it is. This moment, Lord God Almighty, I ask that your spirit come down upon your children here, Lord God Almighty. And grant this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, there is totally like space. You move through it. Wherever the people who are afflicted are, Father, this hour, send out your holy angels with healing in their wings and let them go and touch all those parts of the bodies of your children who are afflicted and let them receive this healing. Right this moment, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, show yourself as Jehovah Rapha, who heals all the families of your children. Those who are here and those who are on the Zoom platform. All our families, make them go. Put the enemy to shame. Because the enemy that has brought all these ailments and ailments and symptoms and diseases. Put it to shame. Clear out all the plantations of the enemy to the other families. Destroy them and let your children be well. Let your children be It is about the work of your hand. Everywhere they have set themselves up, where you work, where you trade, where you operate, any difficulty in that place that you fear it may affect you because some wicked people are there who are doing something on the underground so that they can hit you or hit your husband or hit your wife or hit your brother or hit your sister or hit your body that you care about. If you know everywhere where such a thing is happening. Well, you go for an interview. You are just waiting for the result to come. And you are aware that some magumago is going on, and you cannot do as a child of God. You are going to command that God will fight your battle and remove all of the problems. If you can believe, if you can believe, please help me by keeping quiet. You can even sit down if you like. But if you believe, pray this thing from inside of your heart. Remember, I tell you, I'm not a child. I did not have this in mind when I came here to preach today. It did not feature in my mind, it did not cross my mind at all. But while that song was going on during um, offering, that was when. This thing came. This thing ran first. Is it clear to you what I just said? Yes, sir. So if it concerns you, then how your head begin to talk to God about the matter. Talking to about God about the matter is clear minutes. That's what I mean. Don't just say, God, sit down with the working room. Hey, 
Say, God, this is mine. I believe you gave it to me. Therefore, any opposition to me, remove it. I believe God for it. If you don't have enough faith, please don't pray. Wherever that problem is coming, that man, that woman, that company that has said no to you before, we are going to command God that he will change his no to yes. And he will call you and say, God, take this as your own. Believe God, church, believe God. He wants to give us this blessing. Do you not want to testify? Do you not want to testify? Must you always be below? Be on top for a change. Be on top. For God will not put you on top if you don't decide to be on top and if you don't believe that God will put you on top. Don't say in your mind, this is impossible. Don't try that. It is possible, the voice of God. And it is not God, and they're going too hard for him. That's what we are saying here now. This must come to pass. Trust God, church. Trust the children of God. Believe him, and he's going to answer you. And you will testify here. I know it was happen. Surrender who are saying it's only you, Lord, who have no left. For you are the Lord God, and there's nothing too hard for you. The word impossibility does not exist with you, and your children they know that you own the universe and everything in it. Father, they have for you too. They have cried to you. They have made themselves bare before you. It's not as if you don't know. You've already known. But you want them to ask. And you want to watch if they have the faith to receive. By raising their hands up, Father God is declaring that they have faith. That what they have asked you for, they believe you have granted it already. And all of us therefore say, Amen. Amen. Father God. You own the universe. Jehovah El Shaddai, the Almighty, all subject God, a great bestow and nourish and succor. Jehovah Jireh, a great provider. Jehovah Jireh, the most high God, all of the heaven and earth, dispenser of your great benefits in the earth to us, your children. Today, your children will claim it all. All these enemies, known and unknown, everywhere. They have gathered to say we shall not get that which you have already given us. Father, fight this battle for us. Amen. Confuse them. Amen. Father, put to shame 
all the evil directed against God. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All that you have given to your children, no power of hell can take it. Amen. And that's why we are starting this afternoon. Lord God Almighty, the work of our hands, you promise to bless it. Father, bless it now. Amen. You told us you have to give the for us. Therefore, Father God, crush all the news of the power. Give the heavens open to all and order your blessings. There shall not be no food in our houses to receive your blessings. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you, Lord, because you have answered this prayer. Thank you, Lord. Bless and be that we need, Lord. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you.